I have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my new empire. Your new empire? What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. We have Godzilla, we have Kong, and lots of other monsters to talk about today. I saw this movie in Cinemark XD. What did I think about it? Well... The Titans were the guardians of nature. And the great apes. Two ancient titans, Godzilla and Kong, clash in an epic battle as humans unravel their intertwined origins and connection to Skull Island's mysteries. This is rated PG-13. For creature violence and action, that's about it. This is one of those rare PG-13 movies, big blockbuster films that you could take the entire family to, even with the curse word here or a big monster battle there. I think kids are gonna like this, but make sure they're 13. Did I take my nine month old? No. No, yeah, I didn't want to traumatize her at this age. We'll wait till 12 months. Yeah, so overall thoughts on Godzilla as a whole, like the entire franchise, I haven't seen every movie. I've seen some of the older ones. I saw Godzilla 1998. Is that what it was? It was bad. He stinks and I don't like him. I am a fan of the original, but recently I saw my favorite Godzilla movie of all time. That was Godzilla Minus One because they got the thing right that I've always had the issue with, and that's the human-centric story, which I've never been interested in in these monsterverse movies. Yeah, I'm talking about this universe that we're in right now. Never really been interested. The one that I cared about the most, well, the two, Kong Skull Island, which I, I think going back and rewatching Kong Skull Island, I appreciated the artistic side of that, and I think the acting was really good in that movie, so I cared more about the human story there. And then Godzilla 2014, which I know people aren't a big fan of that film, but I actually, I kind of cared about the characters. Now, they do have a thing in the middle that not a lot of people like, okay, but when I watch a Godzilla movie, because they choose to spend so much time with the humans, I have to at least kind of care. That's why Godzilla Minus One is one of my favorite movies in general, because that side of the story was amazing, and the Godzilla stuff was iconic, spectacular, phenomenal. Calm down. But here's what I'm starting to realize with Godzilla vs. Kong and then Minus One, now this film. Uh, there are two sides to this monster universe that we often get. One that takes itself so seriously, oftentimes that falls flat, but something like Godzilla Minus One balances everything beautifully. And on the other side of the coin, you have a movie that does not take itself seriously, leans heavily in on the action. You get some crazy battles within that, still decides to include the human stuff, which I could care less about. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you, <laughs> we don't care. In this universe specifically, but when we get the action, it's really, really fun. And I'm gonna compare this movie to a Saturday morning cartoon because that's what I felt while watching this film from start to finish as it moved, I will say, fairly quickly through some of the subplots that I could have cared less about. Again, the human stuff, they tried once again, they kind of failed, but what we're getting with Godzilla and Kong and other monsters that we may hit on here in just a second, it was as fun, and I'm gonna use that word, as I've ever seen it in this universe. Because when we started with Godzilla 2014, I love how that movie handled scale and the way that Godzilla moved, making it so realistic. The camera angles, the way that we saw Godzilla as an audience. It's kind of like what Guillermo del Toro did with Pacific Rim, both with that and the way that the robots move. When they're a lot bigger like that, they're going to move slower and it makes it feel as grounded as you can make a big lizard movie feel, and that's what I really liked about those films. These new ones, starting with King of the Monsters, and then, I mean, even Kong Skull Island to a degree, but these last two movies, they're like, who cares about scale and movement? We're gonna make them run as fast as they possibly can. There's a scene where Godzilla's taking on a creature, and he just takes a dead sprint and pummels that dude into the ground, and I'm like, wow, they lost all of what they had at the beginning of this franchise. Does that bother my critical brain, the part of me that really liked the way that they handled that in the other movies? Yeah, but when you sit back and watch this specific film, what it is and what it's intended to be, a schlocky, campy, ridiculous, over-the-top, 
Godzilla and King Kong movie where they have a new empire, they deliver on the title, and they really, I mean, genuinely delivered on everything that you wanted from that title. Now, do we have to kind of parse through some of the human stuff that's a bit of a slog? I would say not as much of a slog as maybe like King of the Monsters and, and that movie. I mean, beautiful. They handle scale incredibly in that film, even though they do start to speed up the movements of the characters. But that human story, I will still say, is the worst of all the human stories. My God, I could have cared less. Boring! And this human story, big time actors. You got Rebecca Hall back, Brian Tyree Henry back, Dan Stevens, uh, Kaylee Hoddle, who has once again a prominent role here. Now, what they do with her character, it's so ridiculous. I mean, it's just... It's just ridiculous at the end. She's like, I'm just like, why? But okay, whatever. As long as you give me big monkey and lizard action. And what they're doing, they're like, okay, what's Kong up to down in the nether worlds, in the under earth, the under pit? As long as he stays in his territory and Godzilla stays in his territory, everything's going to be okay. But then they start to realize Godzilla is preparing for a threat. What is that threat? And as the humans are discovering what that threat is, obviously just to provide us some context and give us uh, mounds of exposition as we are going. And it's like, okay, let's have the little girl do something too, because why not? And of course, every time there's an issue, they have a solution. It's like, Kong hurt his hand? Well, we have Project Powerhouse. And then the other person's like, you can't be serious. Oh yeah, I've been saving it for this very specific problem that we're dealing with. This problem right here, and this hand. <laughs> this is a load of barnacles. Well, if Kong and Godzilla does blank and blank, they could start a war. I mean, it's like the most traditional and easily written dialogue of all time. But again, uh, I mean, it takes up quite a bit of the film. But again, okay, what are we doing with Kong and Godzilla? And anytime I'm thinking as I'm watching this movie, I don't know what critics would think of this. Honestly, I don't care. Just give me a movie without any of the humans because I don't need anything explained to me. I could figure it out as they go. Like, I could have parsed together what Kong was doing without it being consistently explained to me. But when we're on that journey with Kong and he meets a couple of these characters, one smaller character in particular that I was just in love with by the end of the film... That was awesome. And that's what I mean when I say Saturday morning cartoon. That journey is like something I would have turned on as a kid. We're talking just the animated space. But this is big, grand, CGI, real-looking creatures. I mean, this is everything you want. Everything a teenage me would have wanted out of this movie. Those scenes with Kong and then... On the other side of things, Godzilla wreaking havoc and getting prepared for battle. And then when they meet for, I won't say the first time because we had the last movie, but when they meet in this movie for the first time, and then they're preparing for what's going to happen next. And then we get the characters that they're going up against. Is that revealed yet? Can I talk about them? I don't know if I want to. Let's just say they meet their match in this film, and there's one big grand fight in particular where the gravity's kind of messed with a little bit. You have Kong jumping into battle and Godzilla jumping into battle and fire versus ice and other things happening that are going to get fans really excited. And I've never considered myself a hardcore fan of just the Godzilla lore to start with, but now I'm starting to be like, oh, that monster's cool. That, that's a big deal. I know fans are going to like that. And so many moments. I'm like, fans are just going to, they're going to eat this up. They are going to love, or at least have a really good time with it. They may have narrative flaws like I do, but you're going to have some fun in the theater. And that's, that's what I had. I had fun. Oh, good for you. I guess there's something to latch on to when it comes to Rebecca Hall's relationship with this young girl. It's fine. I mean, it, I've seen it in the movie a thousand times. I didn't really buy it or get into it like the film wanted me to for some reason. And as much as I love Brian Tyree Henry, his comedic timing is good, but the comedy that he's giving us here, he's supposed to be the humorous character. It just spouts out one-liners the whole film. It was just lazy, really lazy. I'll give director Adam Wingard this. He has a style, he sticks to it, and he commits heavily 
to it. Oh, and the score, it had some retro synth vibes to it when that kicked in. I'm like, all right, I'm feeling this. I wish they would have used that and utilized that just a bit more. Speaking of score, before I give you mine, if you enjoyed this video, drop that like down below and let me know, what is your favorite MonsterVerse project movie or TV show so far? Godzilla and Kong the New Empire is a massive Saturday morning cartoon featuring big monster battles, exciting team-ups, and plenty of epic moments. The plot lacks cohesion, and most of the main human subplot is messy. They are are clearly going for over-the-top fun, and when this is at the forefront, fans will be satisfied. Also, the music adds a lot to certain moments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you like the vibe change of my videos. I'm kind of leaning into this more, so if you don't like it, hey, that's cool. I can hear myself now. Boy, we're getting better. The technology. Check out my review for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, and stay tuned next week, Monkey Man.